Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the US Explained State by State. Now, I've not done one of these videos before, like unbelievably, like an actual sort of like little breakdown of how each state you could sort of categorize it, what makes it unique, what makes it different to the other states. And, you know, because I, I hear quite frequently how the USA is almost like 50 small independent countries that are like just basically fused together because each one, you know, basically runs itself as a almost like a sovereign entity. And um, it's for, for, you know, someone living in the UK, that's quite a, it's quite a, a new concept to kind of wrap your head around. Like, uh, so yeah, this is gonna be a really fun video. It's from World According to Briggs. Love the guy's channel. He always does a great job of these sort of like geographical type videos. It's gonna be fun. Let's do it. I get requests all the time from people in other countries. These are normally people that are thinking about moving to or just visiting the US, but might not know much about the country past the stats and the travel guide type things. Coming for work, they're coming for school, whatever the case may be. So today I thought we could just summarize each state in the nation to give them a brief look and some information about the Nifty 50. And if you don't know what that means, let's say you're from another country, we have 50 states. And one of the ways they help you remember that when you're like in elementary school is they give it that cute nickname the nifty 50. I that's see. what we're doing today got it get it good let's take a look number 50 alabama spanish explorers are believed to have arrived in mobile bay in 1519. those were the conquistadors right sometime later the united states decided to go to the moon and huntsville alabama is where they made the rockets to get us there they also played a big role in the civil war and for a long time and still a little bit to this day they have a reputation for a little bit of racism like most of the southern states but they do have good people great universities universities and plenty of things to do number 49 alaska and i hear the alabama crimson tide that's the uh football time football team i think they're they're quite good alaska is one of two states that don't share border with any other states it is the largest state by area and the 48th by population they don't have a lot wow. of people they have less than a million people living there 736,000 to be exact but because the state's so big their population density is really low they're ranked 50th in the nation alaska is known for its wilderness its hunting and fishing and cruise ship ports alaska is one of the few states that is hemorrhaging residents Not a lot of people are moving to alaska anymore a lot of people are moving out number 48 it's interesting because you know you hear so much about like property prices keeping on going up and up and up and up whereas you've got a place like alaska where there's just so much space like why why not put some jobs there to get people to move to alaska eight arizona arizona is a southwestern state it is mostly desert even though it does have some mountains and some hills and stuff for the most part it's known for its deserts it's also known for its sunburn retirees and the grand canyon it's also one of the four corner states there's a point on the u.s map where utah colorado new mexico and arizona all meet at four corners ah. arizona is also surrounded by nevada and california to the west and mexico to the south they have some pretty good universities here 47 arkansas arkansas is known as the natural state it is beautiful they have some amazing landscapes they also have two of the most dangerous cities in the united states really? pine bluff and little rock stay away from those and it's pretty good i've said in many of my videos that the northwest corner of the state is a lot different than the rest of arkansas arkansas doesn't have the best reputation they're known for their hillbillies their rednecks and uneducated residents they do have hillbillies and rednecks but the uneducated part comes from way back and it's really not like that anymore. They do have some good universities and not all their school districts are bad. Some of them are really, really good. If you like the outdoors, this is a great place. 46, Cal Looked very flat as well. Like didn't really see many mountains there or anything like that. California, everybody knows about California. This is where Hollywood is. This is where Silicon Valley is, Los Angeles, and some of the best beaches in the nation. It's also home to Yosemite, Disneyland, and SeaWorld. If you take New York, Florida, and Texas, and Massachusetts out of the equation, California makes more money than any 10 combined states. But wow. the state is terribly expensive, and in a lot of areas, extremely overcrowded, with a serious homeless situation in Los Angeles and San Francisco. If you ever here called the golden state that's because they discovered gold there in the 1840s and had a gold rush through the late 1840s and 1850s number 45 yeah I, I definitely want to visit california soon you know i know that there's a big difference between northern california and southern california 
like I want to visit LA and do all the sort of cliche touristy stuff but I hear that the homeless problem is is really big like you know it can be quite dangerous in some parts of it Colorado. Colorado is known as the Centennial State because it became a state 100 years after the United States became a thing. It is known for its Rocky Mountains and its natural beauty. Colorado is sort of split in two. You'll hear people refer to the Western Slope, which covers Colorado's terrain west of the Continental Divide, where you'll find cities like Grand Junction, Montrose, and Delta. On the Front Slope, which is the east side of the Continental Divide, you'll find Colorado Springs, Denver, Boulder, places like that. Colorado has has a lot of things to do, a lot of good jobs, a good military presence, including the Air Force Academy. 44, Connecticut. Connecticut is a New England. Colorado was also, was it one of the first states to decriminalize uh, marijuana consumption? Like, I think it was. In state that is not too far north of New York City. A lot of the extremely wealthy people from New York City, let's say financiers, bankers, stuff like that, own homes in Connecticut. Connecticut is a strange state. You will find some of the richest neighborhoods and towns in Connecticut, at the same time finding some of the worst poverty outside the Deep South. It's a really strange state. It's like they don't have much of a middle class. They got the uber wealthy and the tragically poor. But they do have a Ivy League school. Yale is in New Haven. Haven. Their biggest cities are Hartford and New Haven. 43, Delaware. De yeah, it isn't, uh, yeah, Hartford. I think that's one of the uh, poorer towns or cities in Connecticut. Isn't Harvard in Connecticut? No, Harvard is in Bos Boston? Delaware is the first state. Yep, it was the first state admitted into the union, and it is also the home of our current president, Joe Biden. Its capital city is Dover, and its largest city is Wilmington, which normally doesn't make the press unless it's something bad. They got a lot of crime going on in Wilmington. Beautiful and historic city, it's just got a whole bunch of crime and poverty right now. Delaware is kind of small and oddly shaped, and kind of hard to find if you don't know where it is. So if you're looking at a map and you see Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., it's in between there. Number 42, Florida. Florida is known as the Sunshine State because they get a lot of it. They also get a lot of hurricanes and they got alligators. Keep that in mind. They're also Gators. known for having a lot of cruise ships going in and out of there and for having Orlando where you will find all kinds of amusement parks, including Disney World. And a lot of uh, sort of crazy-ish people, right? You hear a lot about like Florida man does this, Florida man does that. It also has amazing beaches. 41, Georgia. Just north of Florida, you have Georgia, known as the Peach State. Georgia is one of our southern states and its biggest city is Atlanta. They're also a state that has a big military presence. And these days, they've got a lot of political turmoil. A lot of stuff's going on there. So if you show up in the United States, you're gonna hear them a lot and it has to do with some weird political stuff that's been going on. Georgia also has one of the most beautiful cities we have here in the United States, Savannah. Number 40, mm. Hawaii, the Aloha Hawaii. State. Did you know Aloha means hello? No way, there's a Union Jack in the Hawaii flag. That's cool, I didn't know that. Oh, and goodbye. It's one of those words that have several meanings, just like dude and the F word. Hawaii is in the middle Pacific Ocean and it is the other state that does not share a border with any other US state. It is in the middle of the ocean, that's why. Hawaii is obviously another state that has amazing beaches. Its main industry is tourism and it's also where a lot of retirees that have a good amount of money go to spend their golden years. Most Same. people think Hawaii only has like five to eight islands. Hawaii is actually made up of 137 islands. Now, wow. eight of them are considered major islands and seven of the major islands have somewhat of a population. One island hasn't had any permanent residents since 1940. They also have 13 minor islands, which really don't have anyone living on them, and a whole bunch of atolls, reefs, and rocks sticking out of the ocean that they consider islands and part of the Hawaiian chain. Number 30. I hear Hawaii is stunning, just like an absolute sort of heaven on earth type place. But I also hear it's like really expensive. Is, is that true? Are both of those things true? I think a lot of people go to the, uh, on their honeymoons to Hawaii. Like that kind of backs up the whole beautiful thing, right? 39, Idaho. Idaho is known as the gem state. And it is one of those places everyone's been moving to over the last decade. Remember how I said people are flooding out of California earlier? A lot of them are going to Idaho. Now, the United States is broken up into several different regions, and there's one called the Pacific Northwest, which has Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, even though Idaho doesn't touch the Pacific Ocean. Idaho's biggest city is Boise. If you call it Boise, Boise it makes them angry. It's Boise. <laughs> 
38, Illinois. <laughs> Illinois is in the upper Midwest, and this is where they keep the big city of Chicago. Nice skyline. A lot of tall buildings. Chicago. It's in the northeast side of the state on Lake Michigan. There's a lot of things going on in Illinois, but all anyone really knows about Illinois, it's Chicago. Chicago. Number 37, yeah. Indiana. Indiana is... I need to get to Chicago, man. I want to have one of those authentic, thick, deep dish pizzas. They, they almost look like pies. Mostly farmland. They have Indianapolis right in the middle of the state, and that's where they have a big race every year. Actually, they have a few races there at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Indiana is college basketball. If you like basketball, you already know where Indiana is because a lot of the people there live and breathe college basketball or basketball in general. They call themselves Hoosiers. 36, Who Iowa. Knows? Iowa is where we grow most of our corn. Well, maybe not most of it. They, we grow a lot of it. It's just kind of known for their corn. It's also kind of known for its boredom. They do have a couple good-sized cities, Sioux City and Des Moines. It's also considered one of the most boring states. And if you're married and want to settle down and raise a family, boring is sometimes good. Number 35, Kansas. Staying in the Midwest, we have Kansas. They call themselves Jayhawks. Kansas is a lot like Iowa. It's, you know, a great place to raise a family, but it's kind of boring. Their biggest city isn't really even in their state. It's Kansas City, with a majority of Kansas City being in Missouri. But that area on the Kansas side does have one of the best suburbs in the nation, Overland Park, Kansas. They also have Topeka and Wichita, but nobody knows Wichita. where those really are, even though they really are there. I promise you. Kansas is also where Dorothy got her start from the book and the movie, The Wizard of Oz. Ah. Number 34. When I think of Kansas, I just think of like Superman, because that's where uh, his uh, ship landed, right? And where he kind of gets adopted by a uh, Clark, uh, by a, uh, what's his name? What, are, what were his parents' names? Something Kent? Oh, Lara Kent and uh, the dad. What's his, what's Superman's dad? Ben Kent? Oh, I don't know. Or Kentucky. Kentucky is a southeastern state that is bordered by the Ohio River to the north and the Appalachian Mountains to the east. It's not a deep south state. It is a southern state. It's not deep south, though. It's sort of like a border state between the Midwest and the south. I've always found Kentucky to be a little strange in a few different ways. They have some incredible universities, but at the same time, they always seem to show up in lists about the worst states for adult literacy. It is also home to the Kentucky Derby, which is held at Churchill Downs on the first Sunday in May. This is like a big event, not just there, for the entire country. And it's not just the race, it's like a two-week festival. For some reason, people always seem to think that their state capital is Lexington. It is not, it's Frankfurt. 30. I'm assuming that there's a lot of farmland there, just considering that the uh, B-roll on the screen was just pure farmland. A lot of corn maybe comes from there. Three, Louisiana. Louisiana has a bunch of nicknames, but the one that most people know it by is the Pelican State. This is where you'll find cities like Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It's also where the Mississippi Nowlands. River ends right before it flows into the Gulf of Mexico. It's got a lot of history and a whole bunch of poverty. Keep that in mind if you decide to go visit. 32. I like the food though, like Cajun food looks amazing. Like uh, the gumbo and the um, the uh, the crawfish boils and you know, all of that kind of stuff. Like the shrimp, it just, the food looks amazing. I do hear that there's a lot of corruption there though, which is not so amazing. Maine, Maine is a New England state. It is the most Northeastern state we have here in the US. Maine is known as the pine tree state and they got a lot of pine trees and a lot of open land. They are ranked 39th in size and 42nd in population. Their capital is Augusta and their largest city is Portland. Actually out here in Portland, Oregon, if you've never heard this before, that is how we got the name Portland, Oregon. Two businessmen from back east decided they needed to name this little camp that had set up around their trading post. Each wanted to name it after their hometown. They flipped a coin and the guy from Portland, Maine won and he named it Portland, Oregon. No we way. were a coin toss away from being Boston, Oregon. 31, Maryland. Most people not from the United States really don't know much about Maryland. Maryland. I mean, even if you're from the United States, you probably don't know much about it past this is where Baltimore is. Yeah. If you look at the map, Maryland. <laughs> I was just going to say, like when I think of Maryland, like I have family in, in, in that state, but also I think of the wire, like cause that's where Baltimore and, you know, Stringer Bell and Avon and all that stuff. Like I just instantly think of like clips of the wire. 
and Delaware to a degree looks like they just kind of threw these states together as an afterthought. Maybe some landowner was all, I want my own state. So Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Virginia gave a little piece each of their states. Like here, take this land, we're not using it, and shut up. Maryland is known as a mid-Atlantic state that has got a whole bunch of waterways, coastline, and the Chesapeake Bay. The border of Maryland in the northern part is defined by the Potomac River. And there's one section where the state is so thin up near Hancock that you could walk from West Virginia through Maryland into Pennsylvania in less than an hour. Wow. If your gout's acting up, might be two hours. Number 30, Massachusetts. Oh, now this is cool. This, this picture, this still with, you know, this bridge. Well, it's not really a bridge. This highway system and this one and the color of the sky. It looks kind of almost like futuristic, doesn't it? Maybe it's just me. It's Massachusetts is where- But the color of this sky, what's going on here? It's like almost purple. Boston is, and where you'll find Harvard. Harvard, of course, being an Ivy League ah, school and considered by most is. to be one of the best in the nation. I was in the army with in a guy world. from Boston, and he always just said, I never understood why he's all, Harvard, the big lie. I don't know. I think it's a local thing. I don't know. But he did it in this country club voice. It was like, Harvard, the big lie. It was ridiculous. Massachusetts isn't a terribly large state. It's actually ranked 44th in the nation. When Wow, this looks kind of like England. Like this right here, this little uh, street, it looks kind of like England if it wasn't for the street signs. When it comes to population, they're ranked 15th with about bit. 7 million residents. And they're second in the nation when it comes to median household income. This state makes a lot of money even though it's not that big. Depending on the year, their economy is usually in the top five for the United States. Always like number three, four, or five, something like that. So if you want to go to school here, it's a good idea. It's expensive. And if you're looking to get a good paying job, probably look here also. And if you ever call it a state, keep in mind it's a commonwealth, not a state. There's a little bit of a difference nothing major. In a lot of different things, we say we have 50 states. In reality, we have a few that are commonwealths. If you do move to Massachusetts, keep in mind, they have a very strange accent. I shouldn't say strange. It's just very noticeable, especially if you're in the Boston area. 20. What does it sound like? What does the uh, Massachusetts accent sound like? If someone from the area is watching this, like, please record yourself saying something and send it to me on uh, on Instagram, like Kabir underscore Iofi. Nine, Michigan. Michigan is known as the Great Lakes State, the Wolverine State. It's also known as the Mitten State, the Water Wonderland State, or Winter Wonderland State. It's got a lot of nicknames. And it's home to what most people consider the worst major city in the United States, Detroit. The rural parts and small towns are great. Detroit and Flint and a couple other places just are really bad. I did a whole video on how Detroit got to where it is today. I'll leave a link down below. Michigan is ranked 10th in population with about 10 million residents, and it's ranked 11th in size. They have brutally cold winters and nice summers and springs if you could stand the mosquitoes. 28, Minnesota. Not a fan of mosquitoes. Oh. Do mosquitoes serve any positive purpose in the world or do are they just literally blood sucking parasites? Minnesota is a lot like Michigan, probably a little bit colder and they don't have Detroit. Beautiful summers and springs, winters and fall can be brutal but it is a beautiful state in the rural areas. Wonderful people in Minnesota. 27, Mississippi. Mississippi is, by most people's account, the worst state in the United States. Really? They have the worst state capital of Jackson, Mississippi, and they lead the nation in so many things that are negative. I don't know where to begin, but probably the one that sticks out the most, poverty. That's right, the Magnolia State has the worst poverty in the country. Damn. If you don't need to go to Mississippi, don't go to Mississippi. <sighs> 20 oh my God. Savage, but there must be some positive things about Mississippi. Like, there's got to be one. Tell guys, tell me something positive about Mississippi. Six, Missouri. Missouri is a state that is often overlooked. It's pretty close to being the middle of the country, and its two largest cities they have to share with other states. Kansas City is in Missouri, and it's in Kansas. Then you have St. Louis, Missouri, with a metro area that goes into Illinois with East St. Louis. It does have one of my favorite places to go visit, and that is Lake of the Ozarks. It's right in the middle of the state. 25. May Ozark. What a great show. For me, Ozark is probably top five 
maybe top eight TV shows of all time. If you guys haven't seen Ozarks, watch it. I've Montana. If you're from another country and you want to see what the old West was like, go to Montana. It's the closest you're going to get to how the old West was. Wyoming's pretty close also. They got a lot of open land and it's beautiful in most areas. Kind of got to be a tough person to live in Montana. 24, really? Nebraska. Nebraska is just like Kansas and Iowa. Boring, <laughs> but a great place to raise a family. Number 23, gotcha. Nevada. Hey. Nevada's not a great place to raise Viva Las Vegas. As a family, according to just about every survey that's ever been taken. If you're not from the United States and you've never heard of Nevada, it's where we keep Las Vegas. Yes, Las Vegas is the largest city. Well, the metro area of Las Vegas is the major metro area in Nevada. Nevada is a good sized state. It's actually the seventh largest in the United States, but it's 32nd when it comes to population. That's because they only have a few metro areas like Las Vegas, Laughlin, and Reno, and the rest of the state is desert that not many people would want to live in and mm. not many people get the chance to live in it because most of this state is owned by the federal government 22 isn't las vegas like really hot like if you live in las vegas you you need air conditioning everywhere don't you like because i heard that it can get over 40 degrees celsius which is like over 105 quite easily in Vegas in, or in Nevada in general. Ooh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a great state. I love New Hampshire. It's right next to one of my favorite states, which is Vermont. These two states are very similar, along with Maine, because they are the safest states in the United States. They're always like one, two, or three. New Hampshire is beautiful and safe if you want to go there for college or relocate. 21, New Jersey. New Jersey, you know, New it's a strange state. Tony Soprano is where the Sopranos are. Hey, Paulie, how's it going? Where's the Gabagool? Hey. <laughs> the people there aren't really obnoxious and rude as they seem. It's just the way they are. They sort of remind me of Russians. If you don't know the Russian language, when you hear them speak, you think they're angry, at least from a Western point of view. New Jersey's like that too. They sound like they're getting aggressive when really they're just talking to you. New Jersey has some nice coastal areas and some really nice rural areas on the inside of the state, but they have a lot of really bad big cities. Stay out of the big cities. It's a great place to live. Number 20. I hear it's really expensive in New Jersey as well, isn't it? 20, New Mexico. New Mexico is pretty close to Mississippi when it comes to poverty. New Mexico's got some problems and most of it stems from they just don't have a lot of jobs. But if you like the desert, it's hard to find one as beautiful as New Mexico. 19, New York State. New York is a very interesting state because most people not from the country don't realize that New York City is not the entire state. New York City has about three quarters of the people of New York State, but it only has about a fifth of the land. It is known as the Empire State and it is a melting pot. That's why most people coming from other countries, one of the first places they hear they should move to. Is that is an amazing shot. Like, this is an amazing shot. Just, it looks so built up. Very densely populated, I imagine. Yeah, very cool shot. Is New York or New York City. You will find every creed, race, sexual orientation, religion, mental disorder, and profession in New York. 18, North Carolina. North Carolina is where the Wright brothers flew for the first time. They say it was Kitty Hawk, but really it was a place called Kill Devil Hill. North Carolina has some amazing cities like Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, and of course, not a city, but they have the Outer Banks, which is beautiful. It is known as the Tar Heel State. I'd get into it, but there's several different reasons they call it that, and it's just a really long story. Look it up, it's interesting. 17, North Dakota. North Dakota is a strange state. It's one of our most northern states, and it's really never caught on. They have a I love the accent in Dakota. Dakota, it's almost like Canadian, isn't it? Like, does, does Dakota share a border with Canada? A couple places that have some population, but for the most part, it's a state that's got a lot of open land. Now, I say it's never really caught on. There's never been a major migration there. They've had little spurts when they started working the oil fields some years back, but it's never been a sustained migration. North Dakota is known for that open land and brutal winters. 16, Ohio. The Buckeye State is a state that's been on decline for about 30 years now. Ohio is home to one of the most depressing cities in the United States, which is Cleveland, which is also home to my favorite football team. Ohio only has the Cleveland Browns, right? Four or five major cities. You got Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Toledo, and Dayton. And of them, only Columbus is the one you want to live in. 
If you like football, it's a great place to live. They're big on college football and the NFL. They actually have the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. 15, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is right above Texas. And if you talk to someone from Oklahoma, they say they're just like Texas. And if you talk to someone from Texas, they'll say Oklahoma wishes it was a lot like Texas. (laughs) This comedian I saw years ago said that he used to live in Oklahoma and they should change their welcome sign at the state line. Instead of welcome to Oklahoma, the Sooner State, it should just be a picture of a cop going, nothing to see here, folks. Keep moving. Yeah, Oklahoma is not the greatest place. Really? Number 14, Oregon. Oregon's a state that used to be a lot better. For many years, it was one of the most moved to states. It's beautiful, outdoor activities, amazing forests, mountains, lakes, rivers, streams. We got water everywhere. These days, we got problems everywhere, and most of those problems everywhere are everywhere around Portland, Oregon, the largest city in the state. I hear this so much. I hear that, you know, you should avoid Portland, avoid Portland, Oregon. Why, though? Like, and surely not all of Portland is bad. It must just be maybe pockets of it. Or is the whole city of Portland to be avoided? The rest of the state, though, is beautiful, and you can't deny that. Lucky number 13 is Pennsylvania, one of my favorite states. Pennsylvania is in the northeastern part of the United States, right next to Ohio, Maryland, New York, and New Jersey a little bit. It also has a little shoreline of Lake Erie. Pennsylvania shares a lot of the things I love about Oregon. There's water everywhere, forests, creeks, rivers, lakes, everything. Just a beautiful state outside the cities. Pennsylvania has two major cities you've probably heard of, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and it has a handful of pretty decent smaller towns or cities. Harrisburg, Allentown, Scranton. Scranton's not the greatest, but still. And it's all- Scranton? I don't know why I said it in that accent. Scranton? It's how I imagine that the locals say it. Also home to my favorite small town in America, Honesdale. Number 12, Rhode Island, or Little Rhodey. That's its nickname. It is the smallest state we have. It is ranked 50th in size, meaning it is the absolute smallest. It's also 45th in population, but when it comes to population density, they're second in the nation. Rhode Island's a great place to be if you like seafood. Their other nickname, which is their official nickname, is the Ocean State. Number 11, South Carolina. Over the last handful of- I do love seafood. It looks like I've got to visit Rhode Island. Which state is the best to get seafood? I've heard Maine is really good for lobster. Your South Carolina has kind of grown on me. They've got some great cities and a lot of history. Charleston's a perfect example. Most people just think about Myrtle Beach because it's a great place to go on vacation. Myrtle Beach ain't that great. The beaches are cool, the city, not so much. Columbia is okay and so is Greenville, but if I was moving to South Carolina, I would definitely choose Charleston. Number 10, South Dakota. South Dakota's a lot like North Dakota, just completely different. They actually have terrain features. Really, the only thing they have in common is a border and the word Dakota. South Dakota is where you find Mount Rushmore, which is that monument carved into a mountainside of president's heads. If you're not from the United States, those heads are Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Teddy Roosevelt. They got room for more heads, but nobody can really agree on who else should go up there. I think there's strong arguments for Reagan, FDR, and Kennedy. South Dakota is a great state if you like doing things outdoors. Number nine. Not a lot of tall buildings in South Dakota. It seemed uh, another state that was quite flat. Tennessee. Tennessee is another amazing state with a lot of great history. It's got some pretty cool cities too. Knoxville, Nashville, Memphis. Memphis ain't that great. You got to stay out of it. But Beale Street's pretty cool. It's kind of dangerous. The rest of the state is pretty good. Number eight, Texas. Texas is another state that's been built on oil. These days, it's just an all-around energy state. Oil still plays a big part, and so does finance. A lot of banking and stuff like that goes on in Texas. It's not all cowboy hats and cowboy boots. Well, at least not cowboy hats. Cowboy boots, it's like everyone in Texas has to own a pair. Texas is one of the most moved to states we have right now. Has been for about a decade. Number seven. The property prices in Texas, like with everyone moving there, I'm guessing it's just gone. Like, I reckon the property prices from let's say 2015 compared to now, probably have doubled, right? In only what, seven, eight years, maybe even more in some parts of Texas. Utah, Utah is a state that was pretty much founded by Mormon settlers. 
I know they were heading west. I don't know really why they stopped in Utah other than their leader decided it was a good place. I don't know if he confused the Great Salt Lake with the Pacific Ocean. I know they have different stories, but I think he got here and said, there it is, the Pacific Ocean. A couple years later, someone went all the way around the lake and said, that's not the Pacific Ocean. And I'm sure he played it off with, I meant to do that. Utah's a great state to live in. Just keep in mind, there is a serious Mormon influence here to this day. I don't want to say they control the state, but they kind of control the state. Number six, Vermont. Vermont is another one of my favorite states. It's up there next to New Hampshire and Maine, and it is one of the three safest states we have. Like I said earlier, every year there's a new study and they're either one, two, or three. I think Maine right now is the safest. Vermont's number two, New Hampshire's number three. Vermont is beautiful and safe and a great place to live. You gotta deal with some pretty harsh winters, but other than that, it's a great place to live. Number five. I actually don't mind a harsh winter. Like, I, I would much rather have a, a harsh winter than a super, super hot summer any day because it's easier to get warm than it is to cool down, for me anyway. What about you guys? Virginia. Virginia is one of those states that you always think is about to have a big boom, you know, and people just start moving there. I mean, it's a steady trickle, but never that heavy migration like Idaho, Texas, and Colorado have seen. Great universities and a lot of work. Number four, Washington State. Now, if you're not from this country, you may not know, we have Washington, D.C., which is the headquarters or the capital of the United States. And that's on the East Coast. Washington State is where you'll find Seattle, and that's on the western side of the state. If you take Alaska out of the equation, it is the most northwestern state we have, right up there against Canada. Number three, West Virginia. West Virginia is just a little west of Washington, D.C., and it's kind of north and west of Virginia. It's right there in the middle of the country amongst all these beautiful mountains. It's a beautiful state, but the state's fallen on hard times since the coal industry started fading away. The people are great. The land is beautiful. They just have some problems about employment, poverty, and they were one of the worst hit by the opioid crisis. It is one of the cheapest states to live in. If you could bring a job like a remote worker or you're retired, this is a great place to save some money and get ahead. It just comes with some challenges. Number two, Wisconsin. Problem is, if you move somewhere where there's quite a bit of poverty or just poverty, there's going to be rising crime, isn't there? Because people are like desperate. So eh, I, don't, I don't know, though. Maybe, maybe, maybe not in this case, in West Virginia's case. And Wisconsin is a great state. And in my opinion, probably one of the top three states to raise a family in the entire state. It's like that. I mean, they don't have any crime outside of Milwaukee, which is their biggest city. I mean, little crime, nothing major. Drinking and driving is probably one of their biggest crimes there. Wisconsin is beautiful, very rural and a lot of places to fish and hike, sit on a dock and drink and stare at the water. All right, we got one more to go. If you're looking to move to another state, there's a really cool website called Home and Money. They could help you get and number Wyoming. one, Wyoming. Wyoming is a very interesting state. They're a lot like Montana with the whole cowboy, rough living type thing. It's a big state, actually ranked 10th in the nation, but they don't have many people. They are the least populated state. They come in 50th. Really? They only have 570. Even less than Alaska. 56,000 residents. Probably a little bit more than that or a little bit less. That's the 2020 numbers. My understanding is they gained some in 2021, but lost some in 2022. Wyoming is surrounded by Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Montana. Most of the state is flat, except on the western side of the state where you'll find the Rocky Mountains. Wyoming's another state that has a few nicknames, the Equality State, that's the official one. They're also known as the Cowboy State and Big Wyoming. If you don't like living around a bunch of people and you like the outdoors, Wyoming's a solid choice. Hmm. If you're trying to like escape all right that's today's video life. hope you guys enjoyed it hope you that was a great video it's cool to see how each state basically you know is somewhat unique maybe aside from the ones in the middle but even the ones in the middle you know they're still gonna have certain things that separate it from the other ones like i i definitely want to visit like i've only ever really been to florida i've been to florida twice i've been to baltimore once that like I, I want to go to um, no, no not Baltimore sorry I've been to Maryland once I, I definitely want to see more of the states the thing is there's just so many countries as well that you want to go to it's like I just wish that you know air travel wasn't like so expensive because I would just I'd probably travel like every month you know like long distance wise but I guess you know there's a reason why it's expensive 
But yeah, the US is definitely a, a cool country with a lot of uh, different sort of terrains, environments and stuff. The food is for me a big, a big uh, plus as well. Just the variety of food you can get there. Yeah, I definitely uh, need to do like some kind of super long road trip, like uh, take six months off and just visit all the states I can. That would be bloody awesome. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.